Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the NASA's Lucy mission that was very recently launched to space to explore several asteroids, and specifically the Jupiter's Trojans, and to find out what the solar system was probably made from a long, long time ago. Essentially trying to discover the origins of the solar system. But in this video we're also going to be discussing the very recent problem that occurred on the mission already, and how NASA is probably going to try to solve this. So first of all, in case you've never heard of the mission before, let's discuss the basic idea behind it, what the mission is trying to discover, and also briefly talk about the spacecraft itself. So this right here is Lucy. And in case you're wondering, this comes from Lucy the Australopithecus, the original fossil discovered several decades ago that helped us understand the origin of humans and hominids and how essentially humans evolved from our early ancestors. The anthropologist responsible for studying this is Donald Johansson, and he actually has an asteroid named after him, and Lucy mission is going to be visiting this asteroid as well. But then, interestingly, the Australopithecus, the fossil of the hominid, is named after the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And so in some sense this is a bit of a play on words and maybe some sort of an inside joke, but Lucy is indeed in the sky now. So this is the origin of the name of this particular mission, but the mission itself is exciting for many other reasons. First of all, this is a mission that's going to last about 12 years, and it's going to use one of the most complex maneuvering uh, trajectories that's ever been attempted by NASA. Over approximately 12 years, it's going to take this trajectory that you see in green, passing by Earth several times using it as a slingshot maneuver, and visiting both areas around Jupiter referred to as the Trojans. And it's actually going to be using Earth for the gravity assist several times. It's going to do so once in 2022, another time in 2024, and then it's going to come back to Earth in 2031 as well. So this entire mission is going to be using an extremely complex maneuver and is going to barely use any fuel at all simply because of the way that this mission is executed. But because of the complexity of the maneuvers, it's not going to be visiting its first target, the asteroid known as Donald Johansson, until 2025. And so in 2025 it's going to do a very quick flyby, hopefully take some pictures, collect some data, and then it's going to go to the next target. But sometime in around 2027, it's going to arrive to its first destination, the location that's usually referred to as the L4 Lagrange 4 point, also known as the Trojans. And in case you never heard of Trojans or Lagrange points before, the Trojans in this case refer to these relatively stable points of orbit located approximately 60 degrees in this location and also 60 degrees in the other location that can also be referred to as the equilibria points formed by the gravitational interaction between the larger body and the smaller body. In this case it would be the Sun and the Jupiter. And as you can see from this image, there are five such points where you can technically place any object, for example an asteroid or even a space probe, and it's going to stay in this region for a pretty long time. These are really stable points, and they've been used for scientific purposes for many decades now. For example, by using this free application known as NASA's Eyes, and by basically going to planet Earth and sort of zooming out a little bit, you'll actually discover that there are a bunch of objects, a bunch of satellites, and different observatories in this location sort of floating relatively far from planet Earth. This distance is roughly around 1.5 million kilometers, and this is the Lagrange 2 point that you see right here. We also have one satellite known as Stereo Behind right there, and Stereo Ahead right there. And these are in the Lagrange 4 and Lagrange 5 points, and they're essentially used to study various interactions of the Sun. But since Jupiter is the most massive object in the solar system, other than of course the Sun, it's naturally going to have the largest Lagrange collections as well. And this is what Lucy is going to try to investigate, which will hopefully lead to some answers about the origins of the solar system. But it's not going to be visiting these objects for too long. All of these are going to be flybys where Lucy is going to get a chance to take a lot of snapshots, a lot of pictures, and these pictures will then be used to analyze the structure, the composition, and of course the density and the mass of these objects. With pretty much all of these flybys being at extremely fast speeds, several kilometers per second, and usually at a distance of around 1000 kilometers away from the object. But in its 12 years it's going to visit quite a few objects as you can see from the simulation by NASA. And for every one of these objects it's going to be taking snapshots of each of them using completely different devices, completely different cameras that are going to be providing different information. For example there's going to be an extremely highly detailed visible imager allowing the scientists to take very beautiful photos of each of these objects 
There is also going to be a thermal infrared spectrometer, allowing the scientists to take pictures of the thermal characteristics, which can then be used to determine the structure and the actual composition of the asteroid in question. And lastly, there is a panchromatic and color visible imager, whose main purpose is infrared spectrometry, used to measure various types of ices and various deposits on the surface. And all of these instruments are extremely similar to the New Horizons probe, although slightly more advanced, which as you probably know took these incredible photos of Pluto a few years ago. On top of this, the radio instrument on the probe is going to be used to sort of bounce off the radio transmissions from each of the asteroids to try to determine its exact mass. This is usually done using what's known as the Doppler shift measurements, and this has been done before and is a pretty well-known technique. Moreover, because Lucy is essentially going to be stuck in this orbit for a pretty long time, the idea here is that it's not going to be going anywhere, it's not going to be colliding with anything, it's not going to be disappearing for one reason or another, so there's always a chance that sometimes in the future, if the humanity is like super advanced and we have a capability to travel across the solar system, we'll be able to somehow recover it, which is why the scientists have also left a few easter eggs, I guess. A few tidbits of information and a few disks that have some extra stuff in them. Specifically, this is referred to as the Lucy plaque, and you can learn a little bit more about it in the article in the description below. There's quite a lot of stuff here, and a lot of it is quite memorable and quite inspirational. Now what about the asteroids or the Trojans is going to be visiting? So as I mentioned, it's going to be passing by one asteroid, Donald Johansson, but then in 2027 it's going to reach its first Trojan, the object known as Eurybates. And not so long ago, as you can see in this animation, the scientists discovered that this object also has a tiny tiny moon. And so it's going to be pretty exciting for the scientists to discover what's going on here and to learn more about the origin of this particular object. As you can see right now, the resolution and the pictures we have of this is just a few pixels across. And so in about six years from now, we'll hopefully have extremely detailed pictures of all of this. Its next destination is going to be Polymoli, and then the last rock is going to be visiting is a children known as Aorus. All of these asteroids are relatively similar in size, anywhere from about 20 to 50 kilometers across, but all of them have a chance to potentially share completely different origins, which is of course one of the mysteries Lucy is trying to solve. Following this, Lucy is going to return back to Earth for another push from planet Earth, and then is going to go on the other side, to the other Trojan camp, or the other Lagrange point on the other side of Jupiter. And here it's visiting an extremely interesting binary system, a binary asteroid known as Patroclus. And today it's believed that Patroclus and its partner Minateus might have actually come from farther away in the solar system, possibly even from the Kuiper's belt. Mostly because a lot of these binary systems have been discovered all over the Kuiper's belt already. And so this gives us a chance to try to understand how some of these asteroids ended up in the same location and how Jupiter might have influenced the evolution of the solar system. But interestingly enough, after this, Lucy is actually going to be in a completely stable orbit, going between L4 and L5 points every six years. And so in theory, this mission can be extended for an extremely long time. So chances are, as long as the battery is still operational, and as long as the cameras are still working, a lot more objects are going to be visited, and a lot more pictures might come out that might help us discover even more secrets of the origin of the solar system. But that's of course assuming that the scientists are able to resolve the current problem that has just been announced by NASA. Apparently, one of the solar panels on Lucy did not retract correctly. It's sort of stuck in the wrong position. And specifically, this problem occurred right after the takeoff, where one of the giant circular solar panels has only retracted by about 75 to 95 percent, with one of the lanyards unfortunately still holding it in place. Now, it's quite possible that NASA will be able to sort of close it and reopen again, but they're not going to be able to do any of this until mid-November. So at the moment, it's still kind of unknown what's going to happen to the mission as it proceeds away from planet Earth. Now, right now it does have enough energy and it does seem to function properly. But because this mission is going to be moving farther and farther from the sun, it's going to be receiving less and less sunlight and so the solar panels are going to be functioning slightly more effectively. Which of course means that if the mission is really far away from the sun, if it's essentially in one of the Trojan camps around Jupiter, at that point it's only going to be receiving 1 25th of sunlight. And so if the panels are not fully retracted, there's a slight chance that the mission might actually end prematurely, because it's not going to have enough energy. However, because the mission is going to be coming back to planet Earth in 2022 and sometime in 2024, maybe there could be a way to reopen the solar panel by launching something at that time from planet Earth 
and pushing the solar panels open. Although that by itself would be an extremely expensive mission, and so unless it's some sort of a billionaire with a rocket to spare, it's probably not going to happen. Which means that NASA is going to have to figure this out by themselves. And in case you're wondering where the solar probe is right now, and how far away it got from Earth already, you can find all of this information by clicking on the link in the description below that essentially shows you Lucy's location in the solar system, which turns out to be already pretty far away, approximately 6 million kilometers away from Earth. And so here you can see that it's already moving farther and farther from Earth, and will eventually come back for that slingshot maneuver. So that's the probe in a nutshell, and here's how it sort of looks like next to a typical school bus, and that's the problem that it's currently facing. Hopefully NASA can figure this out before the mission gets too far away from Earth, but if not, hopefully everything goes well even if the solar panels are not completely open. For now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Once we learn more, or once the probe reaches one of its first targets, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.